uh, he's got the right people around her now, and I think she'll be okay. The thing that got me with that, really, is that it was quite obvious, quite early on, that perhaps this lady had some learning difficulties. Um, is there not some kind of process before somebody actually gets audition where, you know, they go through that, they say, well, is this person going to be able to deal with going on the X Factor? Are they mentally stable enough to do that? Yeah, so it's another one of your good questions, Sid. Yeah, I think um, there is, um, certainly if you go to uh, apply to go on to the X Factor or, or American Idol, that isn't in place uh, when, you, when you first audition. If, for example, you get to the to be in the top 12 um, finalists of, of American Idol, you then go through another period where they say, you guys are going to be with us for X amount of time, are living in a, in, the same, in, in a house together, going through this tremendous journey uh, of, of singing mm. to, to millions of people. And but, living and in a fishbowl uh, at the same time. And living in a fishbowl. Exactly. Their life has changed. You know, this is, is we use, overuse the word journey, I know, but really, this is a, some hell of a journey sure. because then they are, they do, say, undergo, but, but there is a doctor there, there is a, a, a psychologist, there are people that, that they can talk to if they have any problems uh, and in Susan's case uh, you're right to point out people have forgotten that Susan's a very very ordinary uh, woman that did have um, does have a learning uh, difficulties mm. and that needs to be addressed and remembered and and what about her now I mean do they you actually keep in contact does Simon keep in contact to see how she are her and Adam going to do the duet <laughs> <laughs> well, that definitely won't happen um, but uh, well no what's happening now Susan's just about to go into the studio now she's in London and, and uh, the right people are around her I'm mm. happy to say that and um, and of course uh, the cat's with her <laughs> I know you're worried about that Sid um, she's about to record this album and uh, Simon has got uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber involved in this project wow. and um, what's brilliant about this and we know what Susan's Excuse marketplace <laughs> is who her audience is you know and it's not the same audience as Stars Go Dim let's be honest mm. it's about you know she's going to do an album of show songs so there's no surprise there but to be able to get Andrew Andrew Lloyd Webber, who else could do this? Get Andrew Lloyd Webber to write new material for Susan Boyle. It's kind of like, you know, how, how, how good does it get? Mm. Um, so that's when that album goes out, I think, um, and particularly the Americans are waiting for it. It's going to be pretty big. Yeah. A big topic that we were, were going to cover this past Friday on the final in Indie Insider Information was regard uh, the runner-up to American Idol this year, Adam Lambert, and the fact that a little record label, I don't know how little they are, Hi-Fi Recordings, was releasing some session work that he had done for them um, as an album. And uh, and basically, all of the fans of Adam absolutely traumatized that this was going to be released, his pre-idol work. And uh, I wondered how much you knew about that situation. What is really the story there? Because on the one hand, I felt sorry for this label who had these recordings sitting there. But on the other hand, I, the, the fans are saying they're just trying to cash on in his fame. They should have helped him when they could have helped him. And he had to go on idol and everything else. I mean... Well, yes, I mean, my understanding of the situation is that um, he signed a contract. Um, it is a, a you know, as any contract, it's legal binding, so they are allowed to put out that material. Although I know 19 management are very hot on the case, of, if they can stop it, they will. But I don't know, if, if they've got a contract and he's signed it, it will go out. I think whether it be damaging to his career, I don't think so. No. I really don't. Because I think it's kind of like underground, you know? Well, yeah, I'm a, but, but I, I do agree with what you just said earlier on about, you know, it's a record company that, yes, they can legally put it out. But, and isn't there their right to do that? That's the question. Are they right to do it? And you say, well, there's a lot of, I mean, there's only three major labels in the world with really yeah. the clout and the power yeah. and the funds and the distribution mm. to really make an international star. Yeah. Um, and then you've got all these little labels who are trying and barely making ends meet and barely making the bottom line, most of the time never making the bottom line, investing in new talent like your Adam Lamberts. And they say, why didn't that label launch Adam when they could? And I, I from my perspective, think, well, maybe because they didn't have the funding. You could say that, but I, I could also say that um, maybe they didn't have the marketing clout and knowledge to do that and um, I'd be very careful about what I say here because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people on small labels out there that do know what they're doing but then don't have the finance to be able to do it on a, on a huge scale and I don't have to tell you um, in the business how much it costs a Simon or anybody else to produce an album whether it's Susan's or anyone else's hell of a lot at stake and Simon always says the same thing I have to invest a minimum of a million pounds sterling before you get to the whole wholesale marketing but of course, he does it a different way because he's putting people on television and, and creating the audience first before the album or sure. the single yep. goes out. So 
he's coming from a different corner. But yes, there's a lot of people out there on smaller labels that do know what they're doing, but haven't got the marketing budget. It's tough to compete. Very, very tough. Like the self-releasing indie artist, it's so tough to compete, which of course is the whole Fame Games mission, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. Just if I, if I can add this in, I mean, with, uh, with the Adam Lambert scenario, I'm kind of like proud of him that, you know, he, he had the, the confidence to go to an audition. And mm -hmm. I said this before, I think, on Fame Games, that look, I don't care if you're a, you know, a guitarist or you were an indie rock band, what's wrong in at least experiencing what goes on on these talent shows? You should know how it works. It's uh, the threat of rejection, I think, that is probably the hardest part. And also, because, you know, artists, by their very nature, you're an artist. Very sensitive people, you know. And I think that that process, just like we were talking about, the Class A drug fame, everything else, very terrifying. You know, you get on stage and... Yeah, you come across confident in this, that, and the other, but such sensitive creatures we are, you know, and that's the hard part. I know you're a sensitive creature. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember when I first saw uh, the, the pop idol coming out, which was most popular in Britain, I thought, whoa, how could you stand up there and take that? You know, it's just heartbreaking and watching the tears and people crying and being so upset. But we have just touched on this in the sense that, you know, it, it does really, some people that are oversensitive, should we say, it does affect them. Uh, in odd ways or they end up worst scenario uh, of committing suicide because of rejection mm. that cannot go on no. you know that's where you have to stop some more breaking news uh, Simon and is it Sir Green getting together Sir Philip mm -hmm. yes um, yes that is uh, happening in this something that's been on the table for a long time or in discussions. But and, Sir um, Philip Green makes uh, Simon's, what, whatever the net worth they're quoting in the paper, if it's true or not, 120 million look like a, you know, yeah. piss in the pot. Yeah, that's a very, very rich guy. He's a billionaire, you know. Um, so, but yeah, I have to say, A, I think it's a great union. Uh, I really do. And I think um, in Simon looks up to Philip for his business acumen and the way that he works in a marketing sense. He knows how to market that guy. And um, I think Simon, you know, sees this as a new beginning and it gives him the opportunity to to, to literally to create that global entertainment uh, network because he needs to um, to be able to keep control of all those formats and the licensing of those and so I see it as a big way forward yeah Simon is it. very driven isn't he He's he doesn't want to settle with being a millionaire or a multi-millionaire no no, he He's wants, going he wants after more the money than, than, than Philip. Well, yeah, I tell you, yeah, actually, yeah. I've just jotted down a couple of things I was going to ask you on that point because uh, from looking from the outside in, uh, you think, well, you know, there's Simon doing what he loves, which I presume it is. He enjoys being involved in the music industry. And then secondly, uh, you know, he's a multi-millionaire now. So what drives him now? What drives him now is very simple. He, he wants to <laughs> dominate everything in the entertainment business. <laughs> no, but he certainly wants to go um, as a couple of things he wants to go into film production and that's been on the cards for a long time uh, he wants to do that so it's creating these vehicles where before if you look at the X Factor he, he um, part produces that with uh, Talkback Thames because he doesn't he runs a very tight small team mm. and he's never had the people the bodies on the ground if you like to make the TV shows on his own he's always got into bed with other people so now it's about I'm going to do it all myself yeah. and take over the world and I and I would and the biggest cut yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, but I mean, the, these are, if you come up, it's, it's no different uh, for you and I. If we come up with a, an, a TV format idea, you want to keep for the sure. biggest cut of the cake. I mean, it's your baby, your creation. Mm -hmm. And Simon is first and foremost a creative person like we are. I was going to ask you, does it to feel learn. Like... This is why the beauty of the, yeah. the blend of he and Sir Philip Green is that Philip is a pure born businessman. Yeah. Simon isn't. He's a creative uh, person first who's had to learn how to deal in business. Mm -hmm. It's different. Talking about ideas, and we did sort of touch upon the point earlier on about a shelf life of all the talent shows that are around now. Uh, it was so refreshing after the X Factor and American Idol that Britain's Got Talent, American's Got Talent, because obviously uh, there's a variation in the talent that comes along. It's not just singers and so on. Now, have you ever thought, and I'm not reinventing the wheel here, I should imagine, but a lot of times, I actually used to say to my wife sitting at home, do you know what I'd love to see is a program where it was bands. It was actual bands that came on and you had musicians on there. Hey, 